and welcome back to another video here with angel b designs if you are new welcome if you're not welcome back um so in today's video heat transfer warehouse did send me some of their 40 ounce um stanley dupes but this is a 40 ounce tumbler you guys this thing is absolutely huge um there's a million different ways you can design these but i decided to take on the task of trying to do a full wrap sublimation um, it was my first time trying it on this kind of tumbler, you know, with the tapered effect at the bottom. And it was my first time doing it on a 40 ounce cup. So I do have a couple of inconsistencies, um, you know, just some pressure issues and then some seam issues. But with a couple of tweaks, this would be perfect. But I am going to show you start to finish. Now, I did get a template from this from Etsy. And I'm going to show you in Cricut Design Space how I manipulated the template to go ahead and use. And then I also cut it with my Cricut, you guys. I print and cut the whole template with my um, Cricut as well, my Cricut machine. I printed it on 11 by 17 paper. And then I cut it. So we're doing everything in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to show you start to finish we're going to tape it um and we're all going to press it together as well so yeah go ahead and stick around for that all right guys so here is my template here i'm going to show you how i got this start to finish okay now i did design this um this image in canva it was really simple to design if you guys want to design um video on how i created this image specifically go ahead and leave a comment and then i'll try to get that video out for you but i did create this design in um canva and then i just downloaded it and uploaded it to cricut design space but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this and i'm gonna show you exactly how i did it so um first off where did I get my template? Um, this is where I got my template from. Um, it is on Etsy. This is the name of the shop, uh, Dream Work Shop Co. Um, and this is a 40 ounce template. Now you can upload this to Canva and do it. You can upload it to Word, Photoshop. You don't have to do it in Cricut Design Space. Um, she does offer multiple different ways that you can manipulate this template to work for you and whichever program you can also use it in silhouette studio if you would like as well okay but this is where i got my template from okay so i just downloaded the svg for version to go ahead and manipulate in cricut design space i'm going to go to upload and i do already have it here so i have these are my three svgs that i've already downloaded okay and then uploaded into cricut design space Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hide these two just so that, you know, I don't confuse you. I'm going to work with one at a time. Now, when you bring it in, it is locked. So keep it locked and do not resize it. If you resize it, it's not going to fit your tumbler. So that's very important. When you bring this file in, it's already sized. So do not resize it. Okay. So it, and it, it, did, it does come in locked. And this is if you're working with the SVG file, it does come in locked. I'm not going to unlock it and I'm not going to manipulate this as far as sizing goes. Okay. So I'm going to work with this first piece, which is the top piece. Okay. So I'm going to go to upload. Now I have two PNGs that I'm going to work with as far as trying to create this design. Okay. This top piece here is going to be for the middle piece. And then it's going to be for the bottom piece because it's just a pattern. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and hide that because we're not working with that just yet. Now, this is the piece that's going to be for my top piece, which does have, you know, the little craft life in the middle, which is what I want to be at the top part of the tumbler. Okay. So Again, we're not manipulating this piece. We're only going to manipulate this piece. So I'm going to put it on top, but I do need this to go to the back. So we're going to hit send to back. And then we're going to highlight this piece. Now I do want to turn this into a pin so that I can see it. Okay. So I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so that it fits right in the middle. Okay, so now you can see the box here. 
and you can see our image and our pattern and you can see that the box is fully um, covered. So what I'm gonna do is highlight both and we're gonna go ahead and slice it. Now we can delete that and we can delete this box. Here is our first piece, simple, right? We're literally gonna do the same thing for the other two. You're just going to turn them into pins. You are going to cover your design or you're, you're gonna put it on here on the template as, as, as you want it to show, and then you're gonna slice. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide this for now. We're gonna bring in this second piece. I need to duplicate this because I need two of these. And I'm just gonna move that out the way. Now I'm gonna bring in our middle piece which is back here. So I need to bring this to the front. Um, because this is a solid black, I can see it. I'm gonna go ahead. Um, I like how that is, it's fine. I don't really wanna manipulate it anymore. And I'm gonna slice. We're gonna delete that. We're gonna delete the template. And now we have our second piece and I'm going to go ahead and hide that for now. And then this is my second piece and this is our bottom piece. I need to bring this to the front. Um, this also, the pattern is already fine. The only reason why I turned the top part into a pin was because we had the design, right? The girl on it. And I wanted to make sure that the girl was lined up in the middle the way I needed it to. That's why I turned the, the um, top piece into a pin. These pieces, because there's no image, it's just a pattern. You don't necessarily have to turn it into a pin if you don't want to. So we're gonna highlight both and we're gonna slice. And we're gonna delete. All right, so now we have all three pieces. Super easy, right? And we're not going to, again, we're not gonna manipulate the sizing because we don't need to. And then I'm gonna go to make it. And of course, because Cricut finally has the bigger print and cuts, we can go ahead and cut and print this with our Cricut. Okay, um, do make sure that you mirror. These are sublimation images, so don't forget to hit your mirror button, okay? Um, hit the mirror button on both. We're gonna go to continue. Um, now I'm gonna print this from my Epson EcoTank 8550, and then I am going to turn the bleed off, and I'm going to cut it on cardstock. The cardstock setting, um, it does cut all the way through, which is fine. Um, but I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get these cut out and then I'm going to come back and we are going to press it together. All right, you guys. So I have all my pieces cut out. Um, it did cut pretty good. There's a tiny bit of a white lip here. Um, to combat that, you could probably just add the bleed and that would get rid of that. But it's so small. I'm not really, you know, too, too concerned with it. Um, but it did cut out all three of my pieces here, okay? So this is the tumbler, and you know what? I forgot to grab my screwdriver. So I do have to take the handles off because I'm doing a full wrap. At the bottom of the, the um, this is the handle here. At the bottom, they got these little black stoppers here. So you gotta go ahead and pop those out. I'm gonna run and grab my screwdriver. I will be right back so we can unscrew this. All right, so I do have my screws out, okay, for my handle. So this is, this is what it looks like. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap this. Now, because I've been touching it, I'm going to go ahead and lint roll it. You can use alcohol wipes and then let it dry. I'm just being a little impatient. So I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna start with the bottom. Let me grab my heat tape. And you guys, all of my materials will be linked down below. So definitely make sure you check there first. And I do have, now I don't have a, um, I don't have a uh, a sublimation oven. Um, I just got my little, you know, handy dandy Black and Decker. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Is this not the right size? Oh no, nah. 
Oh, there we go. I had it upside down. Okay, don't be like me. Um, so when you're sublimating, you want to make sure that you get as much pressure as you can. Okay, so I'm bringing those edges together and we're going to tape right at the seam. For this, I'm gonna be using some shrink wrap. So I'm not gonna do the painter's tape method that I normally do. Hold on, I'm adjusting my camera. I'm using my phone, so I wanna make sure you guys can see. Okay, there's my first wrap here, which is the bottom. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the second piece. Let me lint roll the rest of it. gonna roll we're gonna tape our second piece and this one can get a tiny bit tricky just because it's curved so be patient and just work with it until it you know gets the way it needs to don't get flustered just keep working it until you can get it on there. Okay. Let me see. There we go. And then make sure you bring those edges together. You see, it's not super. I mean, it's simple, but you just want to make sure you get it on there correctly. Now, this is my first time doing it. I'm doing it for the first time on camera with you guys. So I feel like. It's not gonna be perfect. I may have, you know, some white somewhere or something, but tumblers take practice for sure. Oh, right, there we go. I think I got it. And then again, I'm using shrink wrap just because this tumbler is a little bit trickier. I wanna make sure I get good pressure. So I am gonna use shrink wrap with this one. Okay. So there's my second piece. Oh, all right, let's go ahead and do our third piece, which is here. Now, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna be holding my handle like this. Um, so I want my image to be about there. And look, as y'all can see, my piece doesn't come all the way. So that means that my image has to go right here because this gap is for the handle. The reason why the edges don't come all the way to, together is to account for the handle. So. I forgot about that part when making this image. So when you're designing your image, wherever you want, like let's say, like how I just said I wanted my image to go on this side, I didn't think about the handle part. So the the craft life has to go on this side, which is gonna be across from the handle instead of here. Like I wanted it. I mean, it's fine, it's my cup, but just keep that in mind when you are designing, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and tape this part. 
I want this to be like as even as possible as far as the amount of white showing on each side. this piece so I need to move this back up this little piece here y'all wants to act up but it's okay I'm gonna get it so I'm just gonna slide this back down because I know this can be done I know it can, they wouldn't make this template if it couldn't. Let me take this off and try it again. And this is what I mean when I say don't get, don't get flustered. Okay, let's do this again. And of course, do you, do you absolutely have to do it this way? No, you don't. You can do it the way um, where you just don't sublimate this part at all and you use a different method. Absolutely. But, you know, I want to be extra and I want to try it because I want to see if I can do it. So I'm going to keep working at it until I get it. All right. Now let's try this again. So I'm going to put it on upside down. Like that. All right, so that is actually better putting it on upside down. And again, you want to pull this as tight as you can. y'all I'm gonna have some white parts I can feel it I'm gonna cut this little slit here so the slit kind of helps when you're you're putting things in a circle if you cut a small slit it kind of helps it to lay down so I just cut a small slit right there so that I could get that piece to lay down the way I needed it to okay All right, so we have it taped. Now, again, I know if I were to just put it in there like this, it would be a hot mess. So what I'm gonna do, I need to go find my shrink wrap. I will be right back and then we're gonna shrink wrap this. All right, um, so when I was shrink wrapping, I thought I was recording, but clearly I wasn't. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because, listen, I'm not a shrink wrap girl, okay? I'm just not. And me and the shrink wrap do not go together real bad. We don't, okay? I don't really like shrink wrap. It gets on my nerves. So the trauma that I just went through trying to get this shrink wrap, I'm kind of glad I forgot to record or I didn't record. I didn't forget. I thought it was recording, but... Clearly it wasn't. Anywho, I have the shrink wrap. I don't have the regular like white tumbler shrink wrap because like I just said, I'm not a, I'm not a shrink wrap girl, okay? I'm not one of the shrink wrap girls. Um, so, but I did have some of the, um, the cellophane, whatever from Michaels, whatever, whatever, because I made my kids some Easter baskets and I used this for their Easter baskets. So I had some left over. So I went ahead and did that. So I basically did the whole thing in one big piece and then I added a second piece around here just because I wanted to make sure I had maybe a little bit extra pressure if I could on around this piece here because you know it was acting a little funny so y'all don't talk about my shrink wrap wrap because you can judge your mother okay you can judge your mother anywho 
Um, so my, I'm using my Black & Decker. Um, like I said before, I do not have like one of those sublimation um, ovens. I have this Black & Decker. Um, it's been my OG ever since I've been doing tumblers. This is what I've been using. So this is what I'm going to stick with. Um, I have mine set to 350 because this gets so, so, so hot that it's actually probably 400 for real. Um, and then I have the toast option, which is obviously off. And then my timer is on state one. That Those are the only three things I have. I don't have anything that says turbo or anything like that. Um, basically, what I'm going to do, I believe... I believe this is seven-ish minutes. Let's see. They did send me this. It doesn't say on here, though. So... Real quick, I'm going to go on Heat Transfer Warehouse's website and I'm going to look up how long this should be cooked for and I will come right back. All right, guys. So on Heat Transfer Warehouse um, website, it does say five minutes. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the five minutes and we're going to see what it looks like. Um, we're just going to follow the directions. I'm going to put this with these right here, the, um, the little brackets for the handle. I'm gonna put that with these facing down, if it'll fit. Ooh, does it not fit? Oh, it's about my hand. Let's see. Barely, it barely fits. I can turn it to the side, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it in there. I'm not gonna turn it. I'm gonna do this for five minutes, and then we're gonna take a look at it and see what happens. All right, guys, so it's been about the five minutes. Let me grab my other glove. Um, a way to be able to tell if your sublimation took is to look at your design. I know it might be a little hard to see because of the shrink wrap, but you see how we can see the design through the paper that's a good sign. That lets us know that the um, that lets us know that the ink was doing what it was supposed to be doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my shrink wrap. And I just kind of want to take a peek here a little bit. Uh, I don't know. We're gonna roll with it. So I did do, like I said, I did do the five minutes. It is still really hot. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna let this cool off for a couple of minutes before I go ahead and remove the tape. Um, I just want to make sure I don't create any ghosting on my cup um, or anything like that. So I'm going to let this cool for about five minutes. I will come back and then we'll go ahead and take that off. All right, you guys. So it's been cooling for about five minutes. It's still a tiny bit warm, but I can go ahead and touch it now. I'm kind of nervous. see that i don't know if y'all can see it but that's okay hold on let me finish taking the rest of this tape off where is my there it is i have my knife Oh my gosh. So, mm, 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 mm. couple of inconsistencies, of course, but that's okay. But let me show you guys. OMG, the color looks amazing. Okay, so let's talk about where, where I messed up at. So, 
of course we have a little white line here between this piece and this piece here as well and then right here um so yeah definitely some tweaks i need to make also trying to make the design look like one cohesive design would have been better as well and this seam right here right here that should have been back here definitely but all in all i mean it was my first cup like i said this is the very first cup like this that i've ever done like a full wrap sublimation on i've never done this before so couple little tweaks but obviously if you're looking to do this or add this to your craft business learn from my mistakes that's why i show you guys everything that i do wrong so that you can do it differently but this came out cute i love that all right i'm gonna go ahead and put the um the handle back on um which is no that's upside down Just gonna stick this in there. Yeah. And then put that one at the top. And then make sure you know when you're taking your the little stoppers off that you kept those as well. So that I mean if you see the screws, it's not the end of the world or anything, but Obviously, the little black stoppers look better. OMG, you guys, this is so cute. And then here's the little black stoppers and we're just going to stick those in there. And then of course, obviously you want to hand wash these. That one's a little janky, but it's okay. See, now they're back on there. <sighs> Definitely super, super cute. All right, well, that is all I have for this video, guys. I just wanted to come show you how you can do these in a full sublimation wrap. Obviously, um, you know, I have a couple of mistakes here and there. Take my mistakes and learn from them and then, you know, tweak it to how you want to do it. But if you get this right, um, this could be so cute. So what I was saying about the design is I'm right handed. So I hold my I'm going to hold my cup like this. I would have preferred if this design was on the other side of this handle. So when you're doing your slicing method and you have your image, if you have a specific image like this that you want to be on the side that you hold your handle, so for me it would be this side. If you're left-handed, you would want it on this side. I mean, it being in the middle is cool too, it's not bad. It's just that I prefer like my image to be more so on the opposite side of where my mouth is going to be right so if i'm drinking from this side i want my image to be opposite the side my mouth is going to be hopefully that makes sense so i just would have tweaked where my design was just a little bit and then obviously this seam should have lined up with this back in case there was an inconsistency it was where the handle was um because now it's like right here where my design is but nonetheless still very cute now of course you don't have to do a full sublimation right you can do you can paint these you don't have to do sublimation if you don't want to if it's too hard or just too challenging for you to you know get this part um you could do uh, there's a million different things you could do rhinestones they sell you know those little rhinestone um strips so you could do a hot fix rhinestone strip that goes around here you could do htv you could do you know it's a bunch of stuff that you could do i just wanted to show you you can do a full sublimation wrap on this that's it okay
But that's all I have for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Until next time, bye, guys.